Despite their beauty, roses always seem to cause innocuous little cuts with their sharp thorns. But let's flash back to the 1930s. If bacteria managed to get into the bloodstream through that cut, it could have been disastrous since antibiotics had yet to become widely available. Fast forward to today, and we wouldn't think twice about a small cut thanks to our arsenal of antibiotics. But they're no simple miracle, as resistance to these compounds is growing at an alarming rate. While humans have a generation time of 20 to 30 years, bacteria such as E. coli can double in as little as 20 minutes. This rapid growth and the selective pressures to survive in their environment favor the development of genetic mutations for antibiotic resistance. Our rampant use of antibiotics only serves to exacerbate the problem. Though we associate antibiotics with curing diseases, it's estimated that 70% of our antibiotics are used in healthy animals as growth promoters. An additional 15% are used inappropriately in humans, either for infections that they cannot treat or as unfinished regimens. It's this completely unnecessary use which is fueling the rapidly growing resistance. Imagine a group of bacteria being exposed to antibiotics in our body. The longer they're exposed to high doses of the drugs, the more bacteria are killed off. But if the antibiotics are suddenly withdrawn, say on day four of a seven-day antibiotic course, the surviving bacteria may develop resistance to a sublethal amount of the drug and then multiply. What started off as a colony of antibiotic-susceptible bacteria is now a colony of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. In livestock, sublethal doses of antibiotics are used constantly, some of which run off into rivers and other waterways to create a breeding ground for antibiotic resistance. The dangers of using antibiotics in livestock is exemplified by a drug known as Synersid. The drug was approved for use in humans in 1999, but a close relative known as Virginia Mycin had been used for years to plump up animals. Before Synersid reached the market, Studies in Michigan, Wisconsin, Maryland, Germany, and Denmark, to name just a few, all found in animal feces bacterial colonies that were resistant to Synersid. CDC investigators later purchased chickens from 26 different grocery stores and found that over half of them had Synersid-resistant bacteria. In 2006, researchers in Minnesota tested samples of conventional poultry raised on Virginia mycin and antibiotic-free poultry, as well as stool samples of meat-eating patients and vegetarians. The majority of bacterial colonies from the conventional poultry were resistant to synersid, compared to only a few in the antibiotic-free poultry. Additionally, the samples from the meat-eating patients had higher rates of synersid-resistant bacteria than those from the vegetarian patients. These studies suggest that using antibiotics as growth promoters in animals can lead to antibiotic-resistant bacteria, which may eventually go on to infect humans. To make matters worse, only two new classes of antibiotics have been approved for use in the past 50 years, compared to 20 between 1940 and 1962, meaning our innovation hasn't kept up with bacterial resistance. So what can you do to help slow down the development of resistance? While the 70% of antibiotics used to promote growth in animals may be difficult to combat, the 15% used inappropriately in humans can be addressed now. Antibiotics have no effect on viral infections like the common cold, so physicians should not prescribe them if they're not warranted. Additionally, patients given antibiotics should use the fully prescribed amount, even if their symptoms have already resolved, to prevent mutations and reinfection. Antibiotic-resistant bacteria undermine sustainable food production, are more expensive to treat, and kill over 20,000 people annually in the United States alone. If action is not taken soon, antibiotic resistance will continue to grow, and even simple actions such as handling a rose may turn into a dangerous prospect.